Welcome. This is Henner from Lund University Center for Sustainability Studies. I would like to use today's video as a little teaser for an article that uh, we got published not too long ago in a journal called Energy, Sustainability and Society. The article is called Local Power and I wrote it together with a colleague from IIIEE. His name is Kes McCormick. Hi Kes, by the way. So in this article we look at drivers for the development of renewable energy in rural areas in Germany. So we're looking at the municipal level, um, local level. Um, we picked three cases um, and we investigated what motivates mayors in these rural municipalities to support the development of renewable energy projects. Um, focusing on these mayors was important because these mayors were indispensable for the processes that were taking place there. That doesn't mean that these mayors can do everything on their own. There are the big social processes that come along, there are investors that come in, there are people that they have to look at. But um, this, the, the contribution by these mayors was really, really important. Um, so we looked at, as I said, at three cases and they had very different features, but at the same time they had one thing in common. And the thing that they had in common was that all these three cases had outstanding renewable energy projects that they developed during the last years. Um, so the first case that we looked at is called Turno Prilak, which uh, is the place where a huge solar power plant can be found. Um, for some time it was Germany's biggest solar power plant and if I'm not mistaken for some time it actually was the second biggest solar power plant in the world. Um, the second case that we look at is the city of Prenzlau. That's a city of 20,000, so still kind of on the edge between a rural and an urban setting. And this uh, city claims the title of City of Renewable Energies. The third case that we looked at is the, and that's my favorite case I have to say, that's the village of Feldheim. This village um, was the first settlement in Germany that went energy autarkic, which means that they kind of disconnected from the grid, from the power grid, and they produced all their energy on site. So it's all from renewable local sources what they use there. And that, reg that is regards heating as well as um, electricity. So we present a couple of interesting findings in this paper. Most importantly, I think, is that individual actors really matter. It's really important what a mayor does or some other person that's in this municipality and that really contributes to the development. Then we found, and that's a very interesting finding, I think, that in these rural settings, these mayors don't really care that much about climate change or the depletion of fossil fuels. What they care about is what's good for their municipality. And that can be very, very different things. That can be that just something is happening in the municipality or that they have some economic gain. But climate change or fossil fuel is really not on their agenda. Um, why should we care about this? Well, I think it's important that if we look at cases like this and if we look at the motivation that single actors have in these cases, like these mayors, we learn how we should communicate um, climate change issues, issues and how we could, should communicate um, the development of renewable energies. So maybe shifting a bit in the communication of renewable energies, shifting away from stressing climate change, the contribution to mitigation and so on, and more focusing on other things like the good of the municipality. How can renewable energies help rural municipalities to move on and develop? Um, then furthermore, I think that all these three cases that we looked at are really, really interesting cases because they show us pathways of how energy systems can be transformed. And with climate change and the depletion of fossil fuels, we will be faced with really, really massive changes in our energy systems. And the pathways that these three villages showed, I think, can be good pathways that we should maybe think of pursuing in the future when we transform our energy systems. So, in case you got curious, you can find the article in the link that we provide. Um, best thing about this article is that it's open access. That means you can read it, no matter if you're a student or if you're enrolled at a university or not or working there. It's open access, so it's open to everybody. You don't have to do anything. You just click on the link. You can read the article. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to pay for anything. No plastic wrappings, just the article. So go for it. So thanks. That's it. Um, thanks for watching. Goodbye. And don't forget to check out the article.